Hey everyone, this is Z from Customs by Z, welcoming you to the first of a series of tutorials outlining my customization process. Today we're going to be discussing preparation and planning en route to base coating painting. What this video will show you the tools needed, the tools I use to disassemble a figure, and how to disassemble a figure, including pin removal. It will also show you my techniques for paint removal. It will also outline my cleaning process and the special baths I use to open up plastic pores on each figure that allow for extreme paint adhesion. And as I said, all of these tips and tricks will lead you to proper base coating to ensure the strongest paint adhesion to your figure. Okay, so to begin, you're going to need a wide variety of tools. Now you don't need everything I have laid out here, but this is just what I have accumulated over the past several years of customizing, especially with transformers. So to begin, what you need is a good strong pair of needle nose pliers. I use lineman needle nose pliers. They're a little bigger, a little stronger than the smaller ones you'll see. A good pair of pipe wrench pliers. They're adjustable to get around bigger parts. Lineman's pliers or cable cutters, a little bit stronger, can really grab on some of those to those deep pins. And tiny needle nose pliers, these are spring locked. On top of that, you need a flathead screwdriver, typically the thinnest one you can find. You'll need various Phillips head screwdrivers. I prefer the long shaft versions of them because they can get to the deep holes of uncertain figures. You're going to need a big old hammer. I'll show you why in a second. This is an automatic pin punch. What this does is when you place this point on the end of a pin and press it in, it sends a little charge and fires it through the end of the pin into the, into the figure, thus pushing the pin out. This is automatic, not as strong as what I'm going to show you next. These are pin punch. Basically what these do is you insert them into the end of a pin on a figure and you hammer the pin out. I will show that technique shortly. I have two lengths. What I did is just the original length that you can buy. I actually cut one down to make it shorter. It's a little bit stronger because even though these are forged steel, some of those pins are so tight in there this will bend and I'm sure I'll show you that today. Along with that, a couple pieces of wood. This is my pin punch board. As you can see, it is riddled with holes. What this will do is it will give a nice soft platform when you hammer that pin, the end of the pin that comes out won't get stuck in your workbench or your table or your floor or your coffee table. So I have a small board and I also have a big board. Okay. Next, some junky washcloths. These are going to add cushion to delicate parts of a figure when you're trying to punch out a pin. Um, you can get these anywhere, Walmart, Target, like a buck. You will also need a soldering iron. This is a pretty junky soldering iron I've had for years and what I did is I took the tip and I filed it flat. See if I can get that to focus for you. You can see the flat edge right here. So what I will do is I will actually heat this up and I will push it against the pin and you wait usually 60 seconds or so for that pin to heat up and nine times out of ten the pin will actually start to back itself out of the figure. Um, if it doesn't do that I'm going to show you the techniques that I use to get that pin out after it's heated. I don't use that technique very much. I don't like to heat the figure. I feel like it warps the plastic even though a lot of times the plastic will form back to its original shape. 
Okay, so we're going to now start with figure disassembly. What you have here is a silicone mat. You can buy these at any home improvement store, any big box store. What this does is it provides a surface that does not slide along my desk. So when I put my pinch pu pin punch boards down, they won't slide across. Here's our victim. Transformers Prime Voyager Class Megatron. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show some of the techniques. I won't show the entire disassembly of the figure, but I will show some aspects of it. I just don't want it to be too time consuming. So to begin, what I normally do with this figure is all the pieces that are on ball joints, I literally pop right off. Make that easy. These wings back here are actually on a little ball joint as well, kind of. What they do is if you pull them gently, it will pop right off that little mount there, no damage. You can also unscrew it. You don't really need to. Let's see if I can get a bit closer picture of that mount. And pulling it off. Like I said, you want to brace your thumb across the screw, and it pops right off. Okay, so then, any other ball joints, we have our arms on ball joints. That pops right off. This arm pops off. The legs, too, pop off. What you're left with is Megatron's lifeless body. This little chest and or cod piece pops right off as well. Okay, so now the next thing I do is I evaluate what parts need to be unscrewed, what parts have pins that need to be replaced. So we're going to set this part aside because it's a little bit more complex. So we will start with one of the arms. So in the arm, what you have is a pin here, you have two screws here, and you have a pin in the hand. So first thing I always do is take those screws out. Any screws that can come out first, take them out. Take my screwdriver, unscrew them. It's always nice to keep a little dish or a Tupperware container next to your project when you're taking screws out. Um, what I tend to do, and I will show this in another part of the video, is I will actually attach a magnet to the end of my, my screwdriver. So when I'm unscrewing uh, a screw from a figure, when that screw comes out, boop, it pops right onto the magnet so you don't lose them. Okay, so now that I got that out, I remove the forearm portion. Okay, we'll put that to the side. Now as you can see again, you can see that pin there, and there's a pin in the hand. Okay, this piece right here is a friction joint. So what this does is if you tug a little hard, it pops right out. Okay. We'll leave that arm down. So in here, here's a pin. I'm going to show you how to remove that pin. So we have this little arm piece, as I showed you. I'm going to try and get a little bit of a close-up here to show you the actual pin. There you can see a good shot of the pin. that piece. Now, as you can see on this section right here, that part of the pin is a little indented into the plastic. This part sits outside or flush with the plastic. Generally, my rule of thumb when punching a pin is always find the point that's indented. Okay, that's where you're going to insert your pin punch. So, we'll take this over to the pin punch board. Basically, what I do is I lay it flat on the pin punch board. You can do either one. Okay, and I find that indented section again, which is right here. Always try to get your object you're punching flush to your board. Okay, that's very important. Now, the first thing I'll do is I'll try my, my automatic pin punch. All you do is basically insert it into that spot, press down hard a couple times until you feel it moving. And now, if you can see... You can see the pin. See it sticking out on that side? Okay? Sticking out maybe an eighth of an inch. 
But as you can kind of see, I don't know if I can get a good focus on this, there is a gnarled part of the end of the pin. And what they do that for is when they have a gnarled part of the pin, that's to hold it secure into the spot that they insert it. So usually there's a gnarled part on one end and a smooth on the other. You always want to find the gnarled part to bang outwards. I don't always do that, unfortunately, never my luck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that down and punch it a little bit more to make sure that the pin is fully out before I start to pull. One. Okay. Now you can really see, and I'll put it up against my finger. Now you can really see how far that pin is sticking out. Basically, all you do next, I grab my lineman's pliers, and what I always do is grab a firm aspect of it, and I twist as I pull. And there's the pin. Okay? As small as that. So I'll put that over with the screws for the forearm, and then this just pops right off. Okay? Easy as that. That was an easy pin. We're going to come back to the hand. This will be a much more difficult pin to remove. You can see it right in the wrist there. Okay. Why this will be difficult is because of the surface you have. You can't put it flat like this to bang it out because then you can't bang the pin to the side. So you have to put it either like this or like this to bang it out. And it's not as stable as the other one. Now looking at this, I can see that there's an indented section here of the pin as well as here. So then what I typically do is I look closely at the pin to see if I can find where the gnarled edge is. And it looks like on the thumb edge is the gnarled side. So with this piece, what I do is I try to get it as flush as I can on my pin punch board. But this is where the towels can come into play. When you have an uneven edge, if you place it flat on a towel, it will help even out that section so it's not wobbling as you're hitting. So, what I'm going to attempt to do is get this pin out. And let's hope I got the right side. Alright, so I have it set down. And what I do is I bent the hand in to give me a little more surface area to uh, punch. So, knowing that it looked like the gnarled edge of the pin was on the thumb, I'm going to place the thumb flat. And I'm going to just simply punch a couple times. We'll see if I made any headway. I made very little bit. I can see a little bit of it coming out. So we're going to continue to do that. Wow, I got it. The hand is usually the one that gives me the fits. But as you can see, the pin is sticking out much more. I can't, there you go. Now you can see the pin sticking out. And that is the gnarled edge. So, as I showed before, all you're going to do is grab your lineman's pliers, give a little twist, and pull, and out pops the pin. That one went very smooth. Okay, put that over there with the other ones, and the hand slides off. Alright, so, with Megatron, a lot of times this purple portion people don't want to paint. They want to leave it clear so if they install LEDs or something like that, um, you don't uh, you know block the, the look. So this is a little bit tricky to get off. It's actually glued in right here. There are no screws, no pins, nothing holding it. So what you're going to basically do is you're going to pry it out. But you have to be gentle doing it. So this is where my flathead screwdriver comes in. Basically, you want to find a point underneath where you're not going to damage any aspect of it. And you're going to pop it a little bit. And there you heard a crack. That's just the glue separating. Of course, this one's going to be a little bit trickier than the rest. You want to make sure that you don't hurt any of this plastic as you're doing it. See, I actually made a little stress mark right there, but since it's going to be painted, it doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm going to show you, as I pull that, you can see the plastic part dropping in. Now, what's blocking me is right here. 
right in there is actually a spot that goes into this port here that's glued in. Now, I can take a pair of nippers and cut that, but I don't like to do it if I don't have to. So I will try to continue to pull. And this one is really, really stuck. So, I'm going to show you how to nip that. Okay, so what I have here are some sprue cutters by a company called Zuron. Very, very sharp, very, very skinny cutters. Okay, so what we're going to do with that is I'm going to come right back up to this spot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these cutters over so they insert into that spot and I'm just going to make a snip. Okay, did not cut all the way through, but it didn't need to. All it needed to do was score that section for me. So now I can come back and start to pull and it pops right off. What you'll see is you'll be left with a little bit of plastic there from this aspect where it's stuck in, but when you go to put that back together, you won't ever see it. Okay, so now we have Megatron's arm completely disassembled. Okay, what I tend to do is I put everything in one little baggie so that way I know what I have. I'll put two arms in one baggie, two legs in one baggie, a chest, stuff like that so I know all the, the components that I have together. Okay, so we're going to move on to a leg. Okay, this one is a little bit more difficult than the arm uh, because of the, the sliding and rotating aspects it has. Okay, so what you'll see here is you'll see the little wing attachment. This has another little clip like the, the upper ones did, so you just pop that right off. It comes off. Okay, what you'll see here is a flathead pin. That I'm going to show you at the very end how to get out. That's where you need a soldering iron. Uh, once I said uh, before, I always look for the screws first. Okay, there's two screws. One, two. So we'll take those out. I'm going to make sure you get a firm push on that screw so they don't strip. Alright, his knee piece just pops right off. Put that to the side. Okay, we'll get these screws out. Make sure we don't lose them. Okay. Now what we're left with, like I said, we have a flathead pin. We have a pin in the feet right here. We have a pin holding this whole turret and pivot portion on. We have a pin in the knee joint. And then we have a friction socket up here to take the hip off. I like to separate the hip. Some people leave it. It's a, this one's a little bit hard to get out. This one is just a lot of fighting. Just pop it right out. There's your hip portion. Okay. There's the front side of the leg, the thicker part. That can be put to the side. There's nothing left on that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the foot pin, the pivot pin, and the knee pin. Okay, I always like to start with the easiest one first, which would be the knee pin. So looking at it again, this side of the pin is completely flush with the plastic. This side is indented. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this up, put this flat down on here. Now this is why I use two boards sometimes. If I were to put this down on here, you can see I'm not flat because of this blocking me. So if I slide this over and drop it down here, this extra height of this board makes this whole section flush now. So what I will do is I will take my pin punch, I will stick it in there and hit it about 10 times. Flip it over, sticking out a little bit. Okay, that didn't work so well. Here's where this comes in. This is the manual pin punch. Now what I do with these is I hammer these out. So I'm going to show you. What you do is you stick it in that spot where the indent is. Okay, don't be afraid to be rough. You don't have to hit it super hard, but hit it hard. And basically what I do is I line it up nice and straight in that hole. I stabilize it and I hit. 
usually it takes one hit. And what you'll be left with is a lot of times the pin punch will be stuck in your figure. But now you can see that that pin is sticking out. Not out all the way, so I'm going to get another hit. Now it's really sticking out. Okay, you can kind of see that pin there. And then I twist this out. Come over and grab my pliers. A nice pinch, twist and pull. There's the pin for the knee. Okay, so put that aside. Knee separates. Okay, now comes a little bit more tricky pins. The pin in the foot. Okay, so looking at it, this side looks to be flush. This side has a little indent to it. Okay, this pin is a tricky pin to get out. I always have troubles with this one, but we're going to give it a shot. So I'm going to get my towel back over here, give it a nice firm base. I'm going to try my automatic pin punch. Ten pushes, and I can see the pin has started to emerge. Not enough yet, so I'm going to take my pin punch back here, the automatic or the manual one. Take my hammer, give it a good shot. Three, and you'll actually feel it move. Still not enough. Let's give it a couple more whacks. And there you go. Now it's sticking out enough for me to pull out. Okay, take the pin punch out. Grab that pin. I'm going to twist. This one is a lot harder. And sometimes you really have to squeeze with your pliers and twist and pull at the same time. <laughs> this one's hard. Sorry about that. Almost knocked the camera over. This pin's a little different than the other ones. The gnarled edge is kind of indented a little bit on the pin. It's not right at the edge, so that's why it was hard to pull out. And as you can see, I actually punched the wrong side. I pulled the gnarl through the hole, which makes it a lot harder. So I actually located the wrong side of the pin, but it still works the same. Okay, now with this, the feet pieces come off. There's the back toe and the front toes. Okay, easy. Okay, now here's a really challenging pin to get off. This pin right here that makes this rotate. Okay, so from experience, I looked at this side is pretty much flat, that side's indented. Now, if I go to do this, I have no stability whatsoever. That's where having two pin punch boards comes into play, as well as the towels. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that up nice and firm, make this aspect so it's flat. I'm going to get my automatic pin punch, I'm going to give it a shot. As you can see, I'm just going to put it right on that pin, and I'm going to push it about ten times. And as you can see, that pin is sticking out nicely. Now, if I went to use these lineman pliers, there's no way I can get into that pin. So that's why I have my needle nose. To get a nice grasp of that pin, twist and pull, and the pin comes right out. and that separates. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my soldering iron as shown before and I'm going to show you how to remove this flat pin. Okay, now that my soldering iron has heated up to the appropriate temperature, I'm going to show you how to remove that flathead pin. Basically my technique is I take the flat head of my soldering iron and I literally push it right in the middle trying to avoid touching the plastic at all costs. Hold it there for probably a count of 30. 20, 21, 22, 28, 29, 30. Okay. Put the sign back down. Don't touch the pin. Now it's still firmly in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold it for a little bit longer. Okay, that should be good enough. And pop. Came right off. Now what you'll see here, let me get this to focus. 
as you'll see the plastic melted a little tiny bit on that that's fine because as it cools down it'll for take its sh uh, original shape again so don't worry about that so that's how you remove flathead pins okay what you're left with is the pin still in the plastic now it's still very hot so normally I'll take a screwdriver and just pop that pin out or try to at least without burning myself so there's your pin yeah it's still pretty hot okay so that's pretty much disassembly pin removal I generally take every single one of my transformers apart as much as I can uh, even if there are hidden pins I will drill a spot through the other side and take the figure apart by taking that pin out um, so what I'm gonna do is finish disassembling this Megatron and then we will go to cleaning so as you can see Megatron is completely disassembled I have all the pieces laid out I have all of the screws and pins in a little bin like this so the next step now is paint removal what I like to use for paint removal is a little bit different than some other people's ideas. It's what I use, it's what works extremely well for me. And it's actually not that time consuming. Basically what I start with is a good old glass mason jar. Next thing I take, some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Don't use 70%, it's not strong enough. And don't use 99%, it's a little bit too harsh for what we're going to do. So what I start by doing open up my mason jar and actually what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put all the pieces into this mason jar now some people will just put the pieces that have the paint in it but my method is going to open the pores of the plastic to accept paint so I'm going to put all the pieces into the mason jar Okay, now you see I've left two pieces out. I left Megatron's chest and waist area, and I've left, left his upper neck and shoulder region. The reason I'm not putting these in this solution is because they're clear plastic. The solution that I put all my plastic pieces in, I found out over time, will actually eat away anything that is clear plastic. So those I don't wash, or I don't put in this solution, so I'll just put them back in the bin. All right, now that I have everything in my mason jar, take the alcohol, pop the top. Actually, we're going to do this faster this way. Unscrew it. I'm going to pour it in. Just enough to eh, cover the pieces. doesn't really matter how much you get in there, just as long as you have a nice amount. Then, my trick next, and this is where you have to be very, very careful. Lacquer thinner. Too much will melt your plastic completely. Too little and it's not going to do anything. Generally what I do is for a, a figure Megatron size, I like to add about a cap full as I spill it. About a cap full of lacquer thinner to that solution. Then all I do is I put the top on. And I start shaking it up. Now, you'll start to see some areas of the purple plastic. Like here, for example, the Decepticon symbol. Some on the legs. In about uh, five minutes or so, that plastic will literally just start to peel right off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit for a little bit. Come back and shake it about every five minutes or so uh, until I see that plastic really flaking off. And then we'll go into how to actually remove the paint completely. All right, it's been a couple minutes, and as I mentioned before, uh, I've come back, and I started to shake it up a little bit more, and you will notice, see if I can find a piece, you'll notice on that leg section right there that the paint has started to flake off. I know I said plastic flaking off before. It was a, an error on my part. I meant to say just the paint. So as you can see, the purple on that leg is just starting to really just flake right off. 
Give it a couple more shakes. Now you can really see it in there. The purple on that leg in there is really coming off. You see it on this one too. Almost completely off. So what I'll do is I'll let this sit for maybe about five minutes more. Come back, shake it a little bit more, and I'll show you how to get it fully off. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. Come back to the jar, give it a couple more shakes. I think we should be pretty much ready to go. All right, so the next thing I do, I get a big old storage dispenser. Okay, just like a big Tupperware container. Glove. You absolutely need a glove on one of your hands with this, especially when working with lacquer thinner and alcohol. Safety glasses. God forbid you get any of this stuff splashed into your face. It hurts, especially your eyes. So we're going to put those on. Junky toothbrush. Wire brush cleaner. And a pair of tweezers. So basically what I do is just open this up. Get your tweezers. Get your pieces out. You'll see some of the paint right here. There's a silver paint on there. Basically all I do, you can even dip this in the solution. And you'll scrub the paint off. You'll see it better on the purple pieces. Paint's completely off now. And what I do is I typically tend to rinse it back off and then throw it in the big container. Here's one of those leg pieces. You can see purple is virtually gone. So what I'll do is just put this down on my washcloth. Get into all the little areas. What it will do is it will leave you with a nice little hue of the paint. And again, what I do is I can I take it back and put it in this container. Splash it around a little bit to get the residue off. Dip it in there. Now the pieces that don't have any, any paint to get off, just make sure there are little to no flakes of paint left on them. Just start adding them to this big container. Here's another leg piece where you can see the paint coming off. So, dip this in there, come down here. Scrub it off. Paint is virtually gone. Shake it around to rinse it. Put it in the container. Now, if you happen to have a piece that has a stubborn paint application, this Decepticon symbol is notoriously hard to get off. However, there's the purple ring around the inside of this chest piece. So I just scrub that off. Now the Decepticon symbol, you can see, I'll take the toothbrush, doesn't really take it off. That's why you have a washcloth. So what I tend to do is I'll rub pretty hard. Kind of takes it off. I'm going to put this up here because I'm going to show you a trick in a couple minutes. So let me find one more piece to do. You'll see that that spot was a purple paint application. Say that ten times fast. I'm just going to scrub that off. Take it back in. Wash it around. Add it to the big container. Let's do a couple more. Try to grab some of the non-paint ones. Now what you'll get, if you were to let these dry with this solution on it, they'll start to get a white haze. You can kind of see it right here. Let me see if I can get that to focus for you. You'll kind of see a white haze forming. That's not any kind of thing you should worry about. That's basically the plastic opening up 
to allow the paint uh, to, to better adhere to it. And the next step, why we're putting things in here, will actually get rid of that white haze a little bit and leave the pores wide open. So I'm going to show you that in a second. Do a couple more of these. All right, so I'm going to finish sorting these into this big bin, and I will be back to show you the next step and my little trick with this piece for a difficult paint application. Here's a quick little tip I almost forgot to mention. The good thing about the solution I just made, you can use it more than once. You can probably use it three or four times before you have to get rid of it, which kind of saves on costs. All I do is I take another mason jar and I put a coffee strainer on the top, and what I'll do is, I'll just start to pour this in and let that kind of drain it out and filter it. You can see in this jar now, hopefully that's focusing well, you can see all the little paint pieces floating around. The purple paint from the Megatron figure. They kind of just flaked right off, which is nice about this solution. And as this filters, you can kind of see, you get a nice clear liquid, it's got a little haze of purple in it, those that are really uh, microscopic paint particles that are left, but it won't hurt any future projects you have, which is a really nice feature, so then I'll just seal up the jar and save it for the next project. Okay, as you can see, I've got all the parts out of this container, and I filtered it into here, you can kind of see it's still dripping. You're going to get a purple solution when you use uh, the Megatron figure. But as you can see in the filter, all the little paint particles are filtered out now, which is kind of nice. So we'll put that to the side. Now, you notice before I did not put the clear plastic pieces in that solution because they will eat away. However, I did put two of the forearm pieces in there, mainly because I'm going to show you what happens to it after the next step and how to fix it kind of a, a, an interesting little tip that you can uh, use on a lot of different applications. So clear pieces can go right into this next bin, so that'll be fine. Now we're going to get back to this clear piece. Well I need to move, remove this paint application, but I didn't want to put that in the solution because it would eat this plastic away. How do I get rid of it? Simple. Take your washcloth, fold it up. As you can see I've removed a ton of paint. Get your good old lacquer thinner again. This time I promise I won't spill it. Always make sure to use your gloved hand whenever it's going to touch lacquer thinner. Just get a little bit on there. And all you want to do is quick, even strokes. Took the purple off, now it'll take the silver off. Virtually gone. There's your paint. Now your symbol's gone. Okay. Same thing on that stubborn Decepticon symbol. Now you want to be careful because this Megatron has a, a really nice grooved pattern to it and you don't want to lose that. So all you want to do is real quick, even strokes. Sorry, hit the camera again. There you go. Gone. Same thing with those little white areas that I pointed out before. Just real quick strokes with the lacquer thinner and we'll get rid of them. You don't want to use, you don't want to do a heavy hand with the lacquer thinner or use a lot of lacquer thinner because it'll melt that paint. So there you go. All right, we're going to add this into the, the bin and we're going to take the next step. So let me close up my lacquer thinner. Okay, so now we have all these pieces in the bottom of this bin. The next step. Formula 409, all-purpose cleaner. You want to find the one that talks about grease and grime. Okay, I usually go for the all-purpose one, antibacterial. Ooh. So what I tend to do is probably five to ten good liberal sprays into the container. Just enough to coat the pieces. All right. Now the next step is take this up to your sink or wherever your sink is, 
fill it and with enough lukewarm water to cover the pieces. So I'm going to go do that right now and come back. Alright, so here we are back with our container filled with our pieces and Formula 409 degreaser with lukewarm water, just enough to cover the pieces. So what I tend to do, just shake. I'll shake probably a good three to four minutes um, just to make sure that those pieces really get cleaned and degreased. So after you shake and get them clean, what you're going to want to do is let this, this solution sit for maybe 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, overnight is fine. It doesn't matter if you want to come back to another day. After that, you take all these pieces to a sink. Again, lukewarm water. Make sure you have two, pair, two pairs of gloves on this time because you don't want any oils from your skin to get on these figures. That will just neg negate everything you just did to degrease. So make sure you have two pairs of gloves. My other one's right here. Take them to your sink. Rinse them all off with lukewarm water and put them into a towel or a paper towel. And then the, the next and final step, um, getting ready for paint, will come. All right, so I'm going to go rinse all these off. I'll be right back, and I'm going to show you the next step. All right, so after we rinsed all these pieces off, getting the solution completely off, take them out of my container. I keep them all in a nice big towel. Then what I do is I immediately, I don't hesitate, I take my compressor, charge it up, and what I do is I come in and I spray the water. What that does is instantly dries, instantly dries the piece. It takes any water, any residue on it completely off. So I'll do that for all the pieces. Now you will get water everywhere when you're doing this. Do a couple more. Now some of you say, well I don't have a compressor, how can I do that? I'm going to show you. Computer duster. It's compressed air, does the same job, it just may take you a little bit longer. just as long as you get all the water off of the pieces. Now I mentioned that I accidentally put the forearm pieces in the solution. And what I can show you is that one that I sprayed off, I don't know if you can really see it in that picture, but it's actually starting to haze up a little bit. It's actually starting to turn a little bit white. Clear plastic, that's what happens. Here's a good example. Here's something I accidentally put in the solution. You can see the white haze that's that starting to appear on the plastic, the clear plastic. All you're going to do again is take that solution of lacquer thinner on your washcloth or paper towel, just rub it real quick, and you will clean out all that white that haze. Any clear plastic that hazes, that's what you can do. But you have to be real fast, and you cannot stop. If you're wiping it, and you stop that paper towel or wasp is going to get stuck to your project. So, what you need to do is finish cleaning all these off, get them nice and dry, and then what I do is I have a little contraption that I've been using for a while now. Let me move this out of the way so you can see it better. This is just a regular deck screw with an alligator clip attached to it. And I will take the pieces that I already sprayed and already dried off and I will find the most inconspicuous uh, place hook that alligator clip up now you're ready for base coating and I always base coat with gloves on and this way you can hold your piece away as you spray it so I will do that to every piece of the figure so on this leg inside is perfect there's a screw point connect that on so you have a perfect platform to do your spray painting on 
um, in one of my next tutorials where I show you base coating, I will actually show you how I can do multiple pieces at the same time. I actually took a, a wooden Lazy Susan and I drilled holes through it that when you are in your spray booth or spraying outside, you can set these in, they'll stand straight up and you can just spray. It cuts down your spray time dramatically. With that being said, a question is going to be raised. What about sanding? Sanding is overrated. And I'll tell you why sanding is overrated. Sanding will do the same job the lacquer thinner did for me. Now the reason I didn't do any sanding on Megatron is Megatron, for anybody that has this mold, he has this amazingly intricate detail on all his parts. It's almost like a brushed metal um, throughout. If I were to sand him, all that detail would be lost. Now, where sanding does come into play is if you want to have an ultra glossy finish on a figure. For example, Masterpiece 10 Optimus Prime, the truck mode. All of his pieces, I will take a 1000 grit, 2500 grit sandpaper, I will dip it in that solution of lacquer thinner and alcohol, and I will give him a quick light sand all before I do any base coating. Once I do the base coating, I'll let the base coat dry usually two to three coats I'll do another really light sanding not enough to remove any paint it's just to scuff the surface then I'll give them a shot of another base coat um, typically when you get to the end of spraying and you're ready to clear coat you wanna give another light sanding to your entire paint and then hit it with the clear coat that will give it an intense gloss shine almost like a, an actual car now you don't need to go that far um, to get a glossy look Testers makes a wonderful finishing spray called Wet Look. It's the best I've used. It's a lacquer based spray. Um, again, once we go through more of these tutorials, when I show you finishing work, uh, you'll see how I use that stuff. So, this will conclude the preparation and planning aspect of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope maybe I could impart some tips and tricks that none of you have seen before. But I do promise you that if you employ these techniques, your paint work and the adhesion of that paint will be absolutely amazing. Now, as people have said before, you can never guarantee there will be no scratching and no painting. That's where you're going to have to look at rub spots on a figure. Typically what I will do is I will take an assembled figure, sit there for an hour to a half an hour, and I will literally go through and transform it multiple times looking for rough spots and I will make notes. I actually have a file cabinet. As dorky as it may sound, I have a file cabinet of every figure that I've ever worked on and where their rub spots are. So what I will tend to do is either I will take some really fine sandpaper and just sand those areas down a little bit or I'll just take my lacquer thinner solution and I will just rub those spots so it takes off a little bit of the paint or a little bit of the plastic and or paint that's there. So if there are any specific questions please feel free to email me. I'll put an address right here on the video. Um, always check out my Facebook page. I'll try to update things I do um, there as well. But I want to thank everybody for, for the opportunity in deciding to purchase this video. I hope it does help you guys out. Thanks.